VIP Access access. with Aniko on Africa Loud. Welcome to VIP Access Podcast. This is episode 11. I'm really, really excited because I'm about to interview somebody who's about to change the game in this industry. You know, when people are having talks saying, what's happening to the Kenyan female rappers, Nikina Nani, Sasa Uyu, Ndia Anasema. I'm very happy to be hosting a female artist who's super dope. She's edgy, she's assertive, she's bold. She inspires me to be who... I want to be, and I think that's part of her um, way of spreading her gospel. So we're going to be talking to her and listen to more of who she is and what inspires her. Ladies and gentlemen, drums roll. Groovy Joe. Hi, Aniko. <laughs> Hi, Hi Groovy. That was such a nice introduction. Oh, by the way. I think I should I'm just a- take you everywhere. So take me, that. take me. I'm looking for gigs. <laughs> no I'm looking to be paid, yeah. but for you, I'll do it for free. Oh, girl. <laughs> okay. It's so great to see you it's and to, to meet, meet you. You, well. mm-hmm. you are so beautiful. Thank you, girl. Damn, you girl. Too. Like, when you sent me your bio and pictures, I just look at the pictures like, look at this beauty. Oh, my God. Thank you. I uh, appreciate that. That's really sweet. You are just beautiful. I, I love it. I love it. And thank you so much for coming through in such a short notice. No worries. Um, I know you're a busy woman between... Um, recording, performing, and mm-hmm. other hassles yeah. here and there. Mm-hmm. So I want to first get into, I think, my first encounter with you. Mm-hmm. I didn't know about you until last year when you put out your record, um, um, Groovy Joe, um, the Groovy Way, yeah, the, the deluxe. deluxe edition, because mm-hmm. there was the first album that came out in 2021. Mm-hmm. And then last year, there was a deluxe edition that included a collaboration with Boutros mm-hmm. um, and Assume Gave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's when I was like, yo, this chick is badass. Thank you. And what have I been doing? Like, <laughs> Thank you. Damn. So I wanted to actually ask you, like, before that album and mm-hmm. before the first one, mm-hmm. what, where were you and what were you doing? Is it me only that didn't discover you or... Did you just like come out now with a record or were you already doing some substantial work? Um, so I started doing like music professionally in 2018. Mm. Um, when I So decided... you came around just before COVID kind of. Yeah. Ah. So COVID kind of like made, I feel like during the period of COVID is when people started to know me because I started off doing freestyles on Instagram. Uh-huh. And then I put that on pause when I went to uni because I was like, oh, my dad was on my <laughs> So I was like, okay. Um, yeah. So in 2018 is when I started putting out more like um, freestyles during quarantine. And that's when I got a couple of like recognition with from Calligraph and some other artists. So I started taking it seriously on, on 2018. And then I, I was just recording, releasing tracks on SoundCloud, just releasing music and boom play. Never really came out with a project of work because I was still trying to figure out my sound and mm. what I really wanted for the project. So yeah. I was I started back in 2018, but like yeah, I released my tape, in, my first official EP in 2021, in March, and I was really excited. The feedback was really nice, so yeah. Hey, hey, hey. and uh, you're just not stopping since 2021. Can't stop, you know, stop. <laughs> because you came now with the deluxe edition, and then you also had another collaborative album with Asum Gave, who I know and I follow so uh, much for a long time. Yeah. Um. How, how did that collaboration album come about? Did you already know him? from back in the um uh, in the days because he's been in the industry for quite some time. Yeah. Um yeah. So um I met Isam Gavi also around in 2018 as well. We went we met I think at City Boy Entertainment. There's a studio on Bagadi Road and I was so fascinated by him. I felt like I've never had a rapper who sounded like that. He's mm. one of my favorite rappers, Kenyan really? rappers, yeah. So when I heard him rap, we did a song together at that time I was like, oh, "Bro, where have you been? Like I've never had like I, w- I won't lie at that point, at that time, I was like, I've never had a, a Kenyan rapper who raps like you because he's so different. He's very eloquent. He, he can transition. And I was just like, oh, this guy. So our friendship started back in 2018. And then like last year, we were just like, we were together in the studio at his studio. And I was like, bro, I think we should do a tape together. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. And we did it. We did it like in a span of three, three months. Yeah, we did it. And I'm really proud of it because it was a very, it was an experimental tape. Mm. We did, um, the, there's a genre called Rage, like mostly like Playboy Carti type sounds. So it was a different genre for both of us, but mm. it came together so well. So yeah, Isam Gavi, shout out to him. He's really, really good. Fantastic. So, mm-hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. And I read um, somewhere, I think in your bio, that 
um, Musao yeah. from the AD family, um, mm -hmm. who's also managing Butras for a long time, actually, um, you know, kind of dragged you into the studio. Yeah. Tell me about that story. When was this and where did you meet him? So it's funny because I was trying to be an artist and my parents were like, Girl, you're gonna have to pay for yourself if you think you're gonna. <laughs> we're paying for that shit because that's not gonna happen. Sorry, you can cuss. You can cuss. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, I met myself when I took like a sem break from uni and I was trying to do the music. So I was really pushing it. I was like, I'm not gonna let anything stop me from doing it because it was it's something I've always been passionate about, but I've always just put it in the back because I've always tried to just not trying to clash with my folks. Of course. Yeah, so, and I know a lot of people who are going through that, but you just have to keep pushing and you have to be hard-headed yeah. if you want to just do your thing. So I, my friend, actually, my friend Risha is the one who knew Msao and she was like, I have a friend who I think I can introduce you to and can help you out and maybe get you, like, to get to, into a studio. And I was like, wow, just like, yeah, show me, let's go. So I met Msao in 20, early 2018. Mm. He took me to the studio. I met Butros. I met Lamario, who's one of my producers. And he was like, yeah, you can you can come and like make music here anytime you want to because he had my freestyles he was like i really like your freestyles and i think you have like great potential so you have my support so i started recording at the mario studio with msao and butros i remember butros was the first person who recorded me so we developed like a friendship and now they're like my family oh that's so nice yeah. that is so nice isn't it amazing to meet like you know similar creatives um it's amazing who are have similar Do, stories. Right, mm -hmm. right. And they see what you want to achieve. They see it's a part of them in you. Mm -hmm. And they see, oh, she needs this kind of space. She needs this kind of support. Yeah. Then they hold your hand. Yeah. That explains so much. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And now, like, when did you start rapping? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when I listen to your rap or... It, do, it doesn't sound like you just like came out or something. Like it sounds seasoned. It sounds very confident. You know, yeah. it sounds just like you've been a rapper all your life. So I'm interested to know when when did you start spitting? Um, I started spitting when I was like ten. Because I was like you were rapping, rapping at ten. Yeah, because I was already I was always I was at ten. I was I had already met my I had already like knew my inspiration in music at that time. And I, I, actually, no. 10 or 11, 11, yeah, yeah. 11 is when I had Nicki Minaj for the first time. Mm. And I was like, no, I have to, this this woman, <laughs> this woman, who is this woman? I want to be like this woman. So I started rapping. I would do like most of her freestyles and try to write my freestyles, which sucked. But I was just slowly just writing. I've always been like a writer. I've always mm. tried, like written. So it just developed. It was, it came so easy for me because it's writing is something that I've always loved doing. So with the hip hop, with the rapping, so when I was very, very young from... Like when I was a kid, my parents were just like, oh, okay. And yeah, I loved it. I've always loved like rapping, singing. I was in choir in high school, mm. which is so weird. <laughs> but yeah, I was in choir. And yeah, that's how it started. When I was but but you're, you're most comfortable rapping. I'm most comfortable okay, rapping. Okay, yeah. fantastic. And, um, you know, growing up in, in Kenya, did you grow up in Kenya? Yeah, I did. Okay, growing up in Kenya, you know, listening to music. Mm -hmm. Who are the rappers, whether female or or, or not? You know who inspired you? Mm, Issa, who... Issa, like hands down, Issa inspired me from the first time I heard him. And Tupac, my my sisters, my older sister, her name is Matabel. She was, she was like, I was someone I always looked up to because she like always came back home and just showed, played us the coolest stuff like Tupac and my Dougie sisters and too. Issa. Yeah. So I was just like, what? and then she knew all the words, so she dropped to me, and I was like, yeah, I want to know that. And Issa was just always. The artist who I was like, yeah, like resonating with his rhyme flow, his storytelling was just awesome. So Isa Nonini, um, uh, Nazizi, mm -hmm. um, I really liked STL, still, mm -hmm. still like STL. STL is really dope. So, but I feel like I really grew up with a lot of Isa and mm -hmm. Nonini. Okay. Yeah. And so when you hear people, you know, saying stuff like, we don't have Kenyan rap, female rappers, or they're dead, or what's happening. Um, what does that make you feel like, or what do you want to do to change that situation? Because, like, knowing you, discovering you, I'm just like, we do have yeah. female rappers. We have so many. Yeah. So, so many. Like, so many dope female rappers that people don't really give time to, or, like, don't get this opportunity. Like, for example, right now, I'm getting an opportunity, opportunity to talk to you, which is amazing. Um, I feel like there's also this sort of ignorance when it comes to, like, female rappers, because, you know, guys just want to, 
listen to the same music and mm-hmm. don't want to experiment. But I feel like we're already breaking that bound, that mm-hmm. border of just listening to specific artists. I feel like there's so many female artists who are coming up and are coming out and they're pushing for themselves. So just another like reminder to these artists to just keep pushing because mm-hmm. their voices are being heard. Female rappers are very very much felt right now yeah who are the female rappers like mm. like who are or or okay who are the female rappers that you you think like you all should listen to these mm-hmm. rappers because there's a lot of ignorance out there and actually on the last episode of this podcast I was speaking to uh Modaka mm-hmm. and oh, she yeah. was also saying like when she won Anna Frima mm-hmm. like a lot of people are commenting on her page instead of congratulating her Kenyans were like we don't know you um, maybe it's people from Tanzania who voted like such ignorance. Yeah. So we came up with the, um, like the takeout from that conversation was like, you might not know somebody, but it's your mm. job to actually discover them. Or yeah. it's my job if I know somebody to expose them to. Yeah. So if you don't mind, expose us to some of these rappers. Who are these? Mm, um, female rappers that I really like. There's a, there's a shorty called Tulia. She's a really, really good rapper. She's a female rapper from Rangai. Oh, there's also a Steph the rapper, but I feel like her, she already she's has a been, really yeah, presence. She yeah. really has a presence. But I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if some people still don't yeah. know Steph. Yeah, but, I feel yeah. like there are a couple of people who will also be like, I don't know who that is. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. So I wanted to talk about, to talk to you about like just how you express yourself. You're very, uh, you know, forthcoming, bold, assertive. Yeah. Even some of the messages you sing about is like about, um, you know, female empowerment or yeah. just feeling good about yourself whether you're male or, or female where do you yeah. get that from so the same thing you've said about like the females not being represented coming out as a female artist back in 2018 i remember i went for like all the open mics i was going for all the open mics because i was like hey, I need to be you are coming hard <laughs> i need to be and then i met sheila kwamboka and she put me on the hip-hop garage mm-hmm. i think those yeah those hip-hop garage and I am so pro female um, empowerment. I love my it. music stands for females. My videos only have women in my videos, and I will keep on pushing that narrative. Not because I don't like men, but I'm just I feel like for a long time women have not been represented properly, yeah. and we've always just had this prop type of situation. We're just there to yeah. sit and look pretty, yes. and we have so much more than that. So for me, I will always be pushing female. Um, even my music, I always I'm always saying like women should be confident. They should just go out and do what they want to do because. The sky is the limit. You are as good as you want to be. Mm. So that's always the message that I've always wanted to push. I've always wanted to push with the mm. women, and that's the narrative that I'm pushing with my brand. Mm. It's just female empowerment, female everything. I love it. I yeah. love it. And um, as you continue on your journey as a rapper, have you experienced any sort of beef in the industry? Because it's always in, ex- in existing in the rap spaces mm-hmm. where someone's like, "Oh no, you're not good enough," or mm. even it's like you're dissing me, but you're just like. I'm not dissing you. I'm just singing about something. Mm. So how has that happened to you and how did you handle it? Was it was definitely. It's happened to me, <laughs> even with some, the comments, <laughs> the tweets. But I've always just been the person who doesn't really pay that much attention to that. Because I, I, I um, earlier on in my career, I remember the first time I was on Nairobi Gossip Club, there was some, like the comments I got, there were some really, really good comments, but there was this one comment that I was just like, wow. It gave me stress. <laughs> I was like, what? This person just really doesn't like me. They were just they were just hating in that, that, that like one comment. And I remember co- it, just like random fans. Yeah, it was just a random person. So they were posting and just saying, like, oh, like a good rapper, yada yada. So I was just like, what? This one. And I was so fixated on that one comment. Mm. And I, I, I don't know why it, it had my feelings at that time, but the next time, like I, as I kept on like progressing in my career, mm. I'm so grateful for that comment. It was a really oh, bad comment. It. I don't remember that comment because it was just, it was really putting me down. And I was just like, because I was just, you know, it's, I feel like it's human nature for you to focus mm. on, the, on something negative when everyone is just like, why, why, yeah. why, why is this problem? But it helped me so much with myself and with my confidence. Mm. I feel like in this industry, if you're not confident, if you don't stand up for yourself and if you don't like give yourself that character, you won't survive because the industry ain't kind and not everybody's going to like you. Yeah. So you also need to remember that and you just also need to focus on just keeping it positive and also just giving out love. When people give you hate, you give out love. I'm so pro giving out love because that's just the only way you can shut them up. If you just start um, fixating yourself, arguing with people on the internet, they're just people on the internet at the end of the day. Yeah. You're not going to live with them. You ain't going to wake up with them. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, before the interview started, we were talking about like, 
um, you know, your busy day. Sometimes your day could start as early as 5 a.m. And we all know like artists sometimes are in the studio till very late at night. Yeah. So how your day is like, are you a, a, like night studio brat or mm -hmm. what time is your preferred time to be in the studio? And then what are the things are you doing during the day? Like mm -hmm. just to get the hustle moving. Yeah, um, so I, lo I'm, I'm, I love going to the studio at night. The vibe for the night is really amazing because I feel like <laughs> that's when you're, I'm most creative. But I still, I, my studio time is really from 3 or like from 2 p.m. If, it, if it's earlier on during the day, I feel like it's because if I have maybe a collaboration or anything. The other days, I'm, I, I have like other like small, like I've started doing something else on the side. So yeah. My days are usually now. Now my days are more busy than they were mm. <laughs> before. before that, I was doing just on the doing. Side? Studio. Do you want to say what you're doing on the side? No, or I don't want to talk about it. It's a little, <laughs> it's a little secret, you know. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. That's so, cool. Mm. That's cool. What's your music style or mm. rapping style? Mm. And then what's your style like? Your image. Okay. How would you describe these so two? I describe my music as edgy rap, mm -hmm. edgy hip hop, and rap and shrap. Because I um, want to push boundaries. If you've heard my music, even my lyrics, the bit explicit, but also very, very, very lyrical, very, very. Um, I feel like I, my my raps are very, very intelligent because I take time with my raps <laughs> and I take that seriously. <laughs> so yeah, um, and with my style, it's always edgy. I'm, I love dressing up. Like I'm, I love doing my makeup. I love looking cute. I love. I actually I'm such a girly girl. People be thinking I'm this tomboy. I'm not a tomboy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a girly girl. I love dressing up. I love dressing up a lot. That's so my nice. style is usually just cute and raunchy. Does it <laughs> happen sometimes that you came to a freestyle or at a show and grabbed the mic and started rapping and everyone's like, whoa? Yeah, um, especially like uh, the period between 2018 and 2019. 21 mm -hmm. when um we said those i was working with tdc experience mm -hmm. they were they had these performances that used to happen at k1 and one happened at move recently i think last year yeah there's one that happened at move um most of the time people usually just whenever they hear me rap they're like wow what we don't know who you are where what is and i'm like it's almost like music. every time you you're performing it's like um you're gathering new fans yeah and i love that because it's always it's always really a good feeling when you see people who don't know you who just immediately come for, exactly. come, up, come up for you. And it's, it's a better um, reception than people yeah. see you like, oh, boring, bye. Yeah. But it's like, wow, it we really be tough out there for artists. Because sometimes <laughs> you go somewhere maybe with the audience. I remember this, this one time I went to perform at like sometime in K1 and it was like not the audience, not the target audience. Yeah. It was just mostly like 30, like 40 year olds and like uh, late 30 year olds who are just Sitting, so the yeah. only time they, they stood up was for an announced. The song of men called an announced. It's more like of a party song with this, um, what's it called? Um, this Afro type vibe. That's mm -hmm. when guys were like, okay, cool. So I also commend artists because it's not everywhere. People mm. will be like, ah. so yeah. And um, at the very moment, like who are the rappers um, you're digging, mm -hmm. or even just other musicians? Like, what kind of music are you listening to? Um, right now, I'm listening to. I really like Barak uh, Baraka, mm -hmm. um, Swahili Papi. Yes, yes, he's really, really good. I feel like he's a really, really good artist. I listen to a lot of Swahili Papi. Um, I'm really f f uh, vibing with uh, this Nigerian artist called Ladipo. Mm -hmm. I just discovered him like I think like two months ago, and I was like, what? This guy <laughs> is beef. He's a rapper, he's so and he's cool. He's so yeah. cool, yeah, and Ladipo. So I'm listening, right now I'm listening to Ladipo. I'm listening to Scissor's tape. I really like Scissor's tape. It's so beautiful. <laughs> so yeah, um, who else am I listening to Kenyan-wise as well? I'm thinking about the Kenyan artists that have been put on recently. There's this shoddy Alma. Mm. I just discovered her recently as well. We, we performed at the same place mm -hmm. um, at, at for Butrus's event. We performed the same place and I was like, wow, she's also a shoddy. Yeah, Alma is one of the shoddies who is beef. I'm like, Why don't people listen? To, why, why is this shorty not put on? Because she's also beef. She's like, she's rapping. Nice. Dope. And I really like Chio Oh, yeah. I like Chio Mio. Chio Mio is a dope ass he artist. Is, yeah. He is. Mm. He yeah. is. So that's what I'm listening to right now. Internationally, my favorite, my favorite rapper, as always, and will always be Kanye West. You know, besides the other, sh the other stuff, we won't get into the other stuff, but he's always been my favorite artist. Kanye and Nicki Minaj. Nice, nice, yes. nice. Mm. Cool. I mean, Thank you so much for coming so through much, to Nico. my podcast VIP access. I love you so much. Love you too, I girl. appreciate everything you do, how you do it. Thank you for the dope records. Thank, thank you for you. working with Asim Gave. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for 
you know, pushing the females to do what they want to do and kind always. of standing strong with the female empowerment agenda. I always yeah. say, like, to be um, to be a feminist is not just to say that you're one, but to actually do those things that create more opportunities. Yeah. Like you're saying, my videos only have females. That's so cool. Give five tips to being a dope rapper. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, one, be authentic. Always be original. Just be yourself. Don't ever try to copy someone else's style. Be original. Second, don't ever stop working hard. And just working hard always pays off. If you're not working hard, you won't see results. If you're just chilling, you know, you have to work hard. Okay, third, um, keep the right people around you, people who motivate you. Don't, you know, you are, the, that thing that says, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. Yeah, yeah, I really yeah. strongly believe in that because you're only as good as the people around you as well. Because if you if you put yourself with people who don't who are not inspired, who don't want to push boundaries, mm. you won't be we won't push boundaries and you won't be inspired. Um, another thing is always approach everything with love. Um, no matter what happens, no matter the altercations. I I have a short term, I don't lie. But I always try to just be <laughs> yeah. positive and just uh, give love. And five, also don't ever also, just because you're giving out love doesn't mean you're also gonna take when people disrespect you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't take that. Don't take, Don't take that. And it's never worth it. I yeah. always look back when I took the BS. I'm like, why did I take yeah, that BS? me too. I'm happy now I don't take no BS. Me too. Because <laughs> I feel like everyone has to go through that. Yeah. Though. And then you're like, what? Yeah, like, yeah. Now, now I think you ain't about yeah. to do that. Yeah. No, my soul sister. Oh. I swear. <laughs> Thank you so much, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. That was Groovy Joe. She is so groovy and so cool. Please yeah. go out there to every social media platform and follow her. Go to all the digital media platforms and stream her music. Okay, so my tape is out, available everywhere. Pressure EP, available on all platforms. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. That's where we're wrapping off at VIP Access this week. This is Groovy Joe. It's been amazing to listen to her, to get into her music, her inspirations, and why she's for all females. Next yeah. week, I'll be hosting yet another amazing musician or rapper or creative. You never know. You just have to come back here to VIP Access. Ciao. VIP Access, VIP Access. with Aniko and Africa Loud.